Microsoft Word 2007 Workspace Fundamentals. Yes, we're going to take a little bit of time to get you started because I can already hear the panic in your tone as you're going through Office 2007 saying, hey, where are my fav the task panes and the menus and everything's changed. The look and feel is so, it's different. You got it. But you're going to find that it's a lot easier to work in here in the Office 2007 system. Some of the different things that we're going to see in our workspace in Microsoft Word 2007 is, of course, the infamous Office Ribbon, uh, taking a, a lot of the commonly used menus and things and trying to bring them to an area where you don't have to dive too deep for them. The Office Button, the um, mysterious button that's over there that actually contains most of what we're familiar with with our uh, file menus. And then the Quick Access Toolbar, which is kind of a nifty little feature. A lot of people overlook it, but it can be very useful when when you are editing your documents. So let's start by rolling out our Microsoft Office Word 2007, firing it off for the first time. And once you do that, you're going to notice that the look and feel of Office 2007 products, especially if this is the first video series you're taking from CBT Nuggets on it, it definitely has a different look and feel. You're going to find that some of the things that you're very familiar with from the older versions of Office have gone away or been replaced by other ways of accessing things. Like, for example, for Word 2003, which I did the video series for CBT Nuggets on, I spent a little bit of time on Workspace and showed you how all the task panes kind of commonly grouped certain things together and they were over here on the right hand side remember your task pane would open up over here and we kind of showed how all those things worked but you know there are still some task panes that show up but for the most part everything the grouping and everything has now been moved up into something called the office ribbon the ribbon bar which is right here you can kind of see it right here now what what is this ribbon bar well Really, your ribbon is essentially the assortment of different tabs that have a grouping of different commands in the little group buttons right here. So you can see the tab here is called Home. This is the Insert tab. So if I click on the Insert tab, you see the, t uh, the little groups of uh, commands that are in the Insert tab. Then you have the Page Layout tab, References mailings, review, and view, and each one of them has a slightly different uh, a collection of groups of uh, buttons. Like for example on home, if we come down here, you'll see you have the clipboard group. Now the buttons is going to show to you all these. You're going to have your paste, your cut, your copy, and your format painter. I mean, you can; those are commonly used tools that are were, are pretty much associated with the uh, the clipboard. So, guess what? That's what you know. You have your clipboard group. Then you have your font group. Well, guess what? You've got all your font group buttons here. Your you know what font you're u utilizing, including the new. We'll talk about this when we get into format and text. That Calibri is the new uh, standard text instead of uh, Times New Roman, which everybody used for years in your Office pro products. But, you know, bolding and everything. You'll also notice that you still have the tool tips. If I roll over here, the context-sensitive help pops up and tells you what each one of the button uh, does. You know, bold. It makes the selected text bold. Woo! -hoo, now I know that. Great. Awesome. Then you can see the paragraph, you know, your bullets and your numbers and the, you know, how, how you want it, uh, whether you want it left uh, align the text in the center, justify it. You can even adjust spacing if there's line spacing, you know, you know, things like that. So these are all things, uh, groups of these buttons that are placed on each individual tab. And so if you don't see what you're looking for, home is obviously ones that are used more than just about anything else. Fonts, paragraphs, editing. If I click on the editing button here, you'll see down a little bit uh, the find, replace, select. Those are the buttons. And because we're at 800 by 600, it's kind of squeezed together. So you have to press the down arrow here to see uh, the particular button right there. Now, if you're if you try to find a button, you might have to click the primary button first and then get to the secondary button. For example, editing. Um, here's the editing button. So if I click on it, then I can get to the secondary amount of buttons that are underneath. And then if I click on find, I can, you know, click on find or go to. You know, you have, uh, you know, the little second secondary buttons come when you press on these arrows that are next to the uh, buttons and commands themselves. So we'll see how we can use that. But you might say to yourself, well, Chris, I'm... Uh, really happy for you. You've got the new uh, ribbon here. It looks cool, but uh, I don't see anywhere on there the print 
or the save or you know the send as an email or the you know wh- where did all that go where did the file menu go the file edit view all those things well guess what you know view kind of showed up over here but the majority of it is going to show up here on the office button the office button yes Office has its own button. Kind of like if you watch those uh, Circuit City commercials that are out at least, you know, as of the recording of this video, where they have the easy button and you press it and then, you know, obviously things happen for you because it's an easy button. Well, this is the easy button for Office. If you click on it, you'll see that you now have all of the familiar file menu uh, tools that you're looking for. Then, you know, creating a new uh, f- a file from, you know, template based or formats or you know existing ones uh, opening existing files uh, you have your save button that you can just save and then you can even have your save as now watch this whenever you click on one of these buttons that doesn't have the arrow this just does one simple command but the save as obviously has different types of uh, ways that you can save the document you can save it as a standard 2007 Word document. You can save it as a Word template. You can save it as a Word 97 through 2003 document, so to make it backwards compatible with the older versions of Word. If you have any add-ins, like um, there is an option if you load it from Adobe to save things as PDF directly. That's really cool. Or XPS. Other formats, this is going to be your uh, rich text, plain text, you know, ASCII, EBCDEC, whatever you want to save the the file um, in that particular different format. Now, just a word. Now, you might be questioning, well, Chris, why would I need to save a copy of the document that's backwards compatible with 2003 and 97? I mean, uh, I didn't have to do that with 2003 and some of those. Well, the reason why was because those files were in binary format. So if you think about it, all of the, uh, the files that we used to do, the default uh, file saving that we used to have, was all set up in binary now why what's what's the big what's the big difference nowadays well now office 2007 files are now saved in the xml or extensible markup language not the binary file format that the previous versions uh, did now the reason why Microsoft did this is to make sharing information between the programs easier because they're formatted in XML and they're written in the same language. One Office program can then be copied to another without having to do any uh, translation from one file format to the other. Now you used to, remember you'd say, well I want to transfer this to send it to a you know, Word, my PowerPoint, I, I would send it to a Word document, or I'd send it to an Excel spreadsheet. Well, it'd have to do some conversion. Well, now, because it's XML, it just makes it easy. It just goes, it's an open format, all the programmers can look at the codes that it's been written, and you can send it in. Now, this is important because if you save it as a Word document in 2007 format, people with Word 97 through 2003, the older versions won't be able to see it. They won't be able to understand it. Now there are, by the way, if you if you do send it accidentally, they can go into Microsoft owners of Office 2003 or XP 2002, 97, whatever, can go out and get a translator where it'll actually open it up and translate it for you. Uh, but you know why you want to do that? You just make it easier for yourself if you know that other people are going to use it. Office 2007 will still be able to open up any of these documents natively and bring them in. So just a little note that you'll see. In fact, one of the ways you can tell whether it's been saved, your Word document has been saved as a Office 2000 format, is instead of like you know Acme Instruments dot doc doc the file extension at the end that the old ones has, it'll say Acme Instruments dot doc x doc x is what they like to call it that gives you the clue that guess what this is now a xml formatted uh, version of that word document so just a little kind of side note we'll talk a little bit about how you can save your copies and how you can share your information with other people in a separate video but i did want to give you a heads up right here at the beginning of the video series about the difference between these just remember you might want to set your save uh, when you click the save button to automatically save it in this format. Now how do you do that? Believe it or not, it's down here under your Word options. We'll take a look at a lot of these later on, but just to show you this, this is a good way to get started. If you click down here, 
and move my menu down here under your word options under save you can notice that the it automatically saves the files in the word 97 2003 document so you're okay for that because of compatibility issues but if it hadn't set it up here and you have it as a word document with the dot docx the people if you just click save it would not it would not be able to be viewed in those other those other versions so go ahead and turn it over here to word 97 2003 document and you're going to be okay uh, there so that's just kind of a little look at the office button of course you also have your uh, print uh, capabilities uh, they give you a couple of options here they have the quick print which means now you can just send it directly to the printer whatever set it for default you don't have to change anything it won't ask you the number of copies or anything or you can just select print you can prepare your document we're gonna do a little video just about security for your documents and sharing documents and compatibility things like that and here is where you can utilize some really neat tools to not only encrypt or add digital signatures but you can also also run compatibility checkers to make sure that maybe you added a little cool uh, feature to your Word document here in 2007. Well, does uh, 2003 do that? Does Word 97 do that? You might want to check that. Send gets you the ability to send an email or an internet fax. So if you've signed up for an internet fax service, and they're fairly inexpensive, you can literally just send it directly from Word 2007 right to the internet fax, and you're good to go. This is very similar to the uh, fax option that you you've seen in previous versions and publish now there's a couple of different things here when it comes to publish publish number one is if you've been on the internet for any uh, particular length of time you'll remember that uh, blogs those are like the big thing and blogs are simply uh, your web logs or they call them blogs so you remember how you used to journal as a kid and write things down well blogs are the same thing only they're now out there on the internet for people to read you can comment on politics or uh, I have a friend who has a blog uh, called grape radio that deals with uh, wine you know amateur wine uh, thing it's you know great little blog that they have there uh, it deals with you know hey I like German Shepherd so I've got a German Shepherd blog and people who like German Shepherds come and read my blog and my opinions on things so you can publish directly all the content that you put here in your Word 2007 you can just bloop send it up uh, once you've uh, set up either utilizing um, a blog spot or some of the other places out there that enable you to share your uh, web blog or your blog document management server uh, beyond the scope really of this particular training but if you do have one uh, you can save it to one of those a uh, document workspace deals with your SharePoint services and we'll, we'll tell you a little bit about that and kind of give you a, a background but again it's way beyond the uh, scope of this particular video series uh, when you look take a look at uh, SharePoint uh, which I do believe they're gonna try to do for CBT nuggets then you'll get a good idea of how you create these document workspaces where people uh, who have logged in and have permissions can come into a workspace and they can work on a particular document and you don't just have to throw it out there on the network drive and anyone can have access to it and you have to set the share permissions. Yikes, yikes, yikes. We don't want to do that. Well, uh, SharePoint helps you do with that. And then, of course, you can close the existing document. Exit Word, if you want to close out, there's the exit right there. But, of course, if you really need to, you can just click up here in the X. Speaking of looking up here on the top, you'll notice that you've got this little area here's that save button this is what is known as the quick access toolbar or if you're floating around uh, the Microsoft headquarters they like to call this thing the quat now the first time I heard that I kinda laughed and thought they were making fun of me but no that's truly what they call it it's short for QAT the quick access toolbar but here you can add your commonly used like save here's undo here's repeat or redo and if you want to add different uh, buttons you just click down here and then you can add like uh, if I wanted to add open I'll go ahead and click and now I've got open now added here or if I wanted to add to the spelling and grammar print preview quick print email uh, tables and more com I mean any command that you have you can add to this quick access toolbar and if you're, you need more space to you know view your document and the ribbons kind of you know because it is kind of big here you can minimize the ribbon so that way uh, when you minimize the ribbon now all you see are the tabs and you see your quick access 
uh, toolbar or the uh, quad. Now if you needed it, all you need to do is obviously click on any one of the tabs and your toolbar or your uh, ribbon uh, will then reappear magically right there. So you just click like there. If you want to see the uh, ribbon again, you can click on it and it will pop back over there. Another thing you might be missing is you might say, well Chris, um, you know, what is, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this, but I'm missing something very important. I want to see where all my tabs are. I want to see where everything else. Well, that's because you're missing the